Welcome, and thanks for joining Opart Hygiene's OHMS webinar. I'm so glad you could be with us today. My name is Peter DeConing. I'm on the marketing team here at Opart, and the experts that you'll be hearing from today are my colleagues, Peter Ickert and Josh Gertz. We're gonna start this webinar by sharing a bit more about who we are at Opart, then give an overview of OHMS, and then head into a product tour focused on key new features. At any point during this webinar, you can send us your questions by entering them into the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel. If you don't see the control panel, you can click on the red circle with the arrow in it that should expand the control panel, and you'll see the option appear. OHMS has been around for 10 years, making us a pioneer in this space. But the work we've been doing to help people live healthy lives stretches back for decades. Opart Hygiene was formed in 1962. And like a lot of innovative companies, it was started by an inventive engineer in a garage. It was in that garage that Herman Opart developed a dispenser that to this day remains the number one dispenser in German, Swiss, and Austrian health facilities. It was the first dispenser of its kind to reliably dispense alcohol-based hand rubs. The company quickly expanded. Opart Hygiene now has manufacturing plants in Germany, Belgium, Switzerland, Ireland, the Philippines, Armenia, and Canada. We have over a thousand employees. We offer over a thousand standard products and hold 400 patents in the dispensing space. Our obsessive engineering, evident in both our software and our hardware, is always focused on solving the real problems of hand hygiene. What differentiates us as a company is that we don't produce chemicals like soap or sanitizer. Instead, we'll work with companies that do. Uniquely, we are solely focused on software and hardware, all for the purpose of our mission, which is to break the chain of infection. I'd like to share more about our mission and what motivates us at Opart Hygiene. We believe that the future is in our hands. With our hands, we can transform lives and save them. But those same hands can also carry and spread disease. To break the chain of infection, we need to start here. This simple practice can help us and those we love live longer, healthier lives. At Upheart Hygiene, we are dedicated to improving hand hygiene in order to break the chain of infection. We create the world's best dispensing equipment, industry-leading software solutions, and have an unparalleled portfolio of innovations and patents. We are constantly innovating to improve hand hygiene. People disinfect their hands more when using high-quality foam? We'll make a pump that produces the most luxurious foam possible. Healthcare workers need feedback to know when they've got the recommended dosage of disinfectant? Look for the green light. Hospitals need smart, connected dispensers that track whether staff wash their hands before procedures. Done! Our partners need a custom-made pump so that their product can shine. We use our wealth of knowledge as the dispensing experts to create a bespoke solution that helps them stand out. From the most advanced medical facility to the most demanding public space, we solve the problems of hand hygiene through obsessive engineering, deep research, and manufacturing excellence. An innovator for over 50 years, Opart Hygiene will work hand in hand with you to break the chain of infection. Hello everybody, good morning and good afternoon. So we have worldwide listeners as I've seen on the list. And so welcome again. And thank you, uh, Peter Koning for the initial presentation. So at least uh, now we have a small insight on what the full operation of OPART is. Today we will focus on the uh, healthcare environment and um, the biggest problem that we face in healthcare is the hospital acquired infections. And in Europe alone, we have up to 2.6 million hospital acquired infections and resulting from this more than 90,000 deaths per year. And that is in Europe alone. The figures for North America are three to four times that big. So you can imagine how many people are dying 
of those infections every year. What can we do to prevent that? As, as uh, Peter de Koning said, our vision is breaking the chain of infection and therefore we offer a solution that is based on monitoring and feedback and that can save lives and that was proven in multiple clinical studies that we have conducted. So what are the challenges uh, in the normal kind of monitoring that was done uh, before real smart uh, monitoring was available? That was the so-called in-person monitoring. That means basically that somebody is standing next to the dispenser and taking notes uh, how the dispenser is being used and which amount is taken. So this, as you can imagine, is first of all, very, very costly and it is not always accurate. And we can always stri strike out the always because it is not accurate. That is because of the so-called Hawthorne effect. And we also have some studies that prove that this Hawthorne effect triples the usage uh, that, is, that would normally be done. So the figures cannot be trusted. And of course, it is like uh, somebody is watching you. So you behave when somebody is watching you. And if that somebody is gone again, the behavior does not stick or does not always stick. So it goes away and you are back into your old procedures. What we offer is feedback that never sleeps. So it, uh, nobody is standing next to the dispenser and we do it 24 seven. So we have an always on digital monitoring that solves the traditional problems that we've seen with in-person monitoring. The, the most critical point is, of course, that we're not just monitoring it, we are also giving feedback. So we want to change the behavior as, as you've seen on the slide before. Um, therefore, we offer three levels of feedback. The first one is that every user sees directly when they are using a dispenser, is that there is a green light on top of the dispenser that is showing that the user has taken out the recommended amount of fluid. In Europe, that is for hand disinfecting uh, fluids, it is 3 ml. In the US, it is 2 ml and our dispensers can be tuned to that amount and the LED will shine once this amount is reached. Then we have a feedback on the individual hospital wards that you can see here and it shows uh, what the combined team on this ward has reached per day and per week and per month, whatever you want to see on the screen and it is updated live. So you really see what you've done up to this moment. And of course, you can also see the data for the entire hospital or institution. As I said, we've done a lot of studies. And of course, we, as Peter de Koning said, we have a 10 year experience. So we have a lot of users already in, in Europe that use the system for, uh, let's say, one to 10 years. And we have some great comments from those guys. And uh, for instance, here one, as a hygiene specialist from the Herz Jesu uh, Hospital in Germany. And they said they use the, uh, the, spend, uh, the um, OHMS software for four months and they could already see that the uh, usage has increased by 34%. And why is 34% so critical? And we've seen the number of uh, hospital acquired infections. And if you uh, reach an increase of 30% in the consumption of uh, the hand disinfectant, you can reduce the number of hospital acquired infections by 25%. And if you go further than that and you count it to the people that could survive, it is a very big number. So it is really something that should be targeted. So let's give you a little bit insight on how OHMS, OPART Hygiene Monitoring Solution really works. It is smart dispensers that are powered by the cloud and it is available on any smart dispenser. Here's a quick uh, overview of uh, what we have because uh, as Peter Koning also said, we are a globally operating um, company. Of course, there are, let's say, different kind of um, 
bottles being used all over the world and therefore also different kind of dispensing solutions. So on the left side, we see the KX Smart, which is a touchless dispenser developed for the North American market, which has cartridge systems and they dispense to the bottom. Then we have uh, the four dispensers in the middle are for basically for Europe and they include a so-called Euro bottle, which is an open system, which can be basically, you can use any Euro bottle that is available on the market, which reduces the costs of alcohol tremendously. And what has also proven fantastic in the beginning of the recent pandemic, because there were a shortage in uh, cartridges, for instance, from single um, manufacturers. And those Euro bottles can basically be filled with anything that you can get at that moment. And that's the big advantage. And that is uh, the system that is uh, almost uh, commonly spread over Europe. What we have there is, uh, as um, Peter de Koning also said, the Ingoman device is something that is uh, the absolute market leader in the German speaking healthcare market. And therefore, we decided to make a retrofit unit for the available dispensers. So we have installed close to 3 million of those dispensers already. And with the Ingoman smart nose, you can basically just fix that to any Ingoman plus dispenser that is already installed. And you can make this device within 30 seconds, you can make it smart. So this is a retrofit unit, relatively cheap and easy to install. The Ingoman Smart is the full, fully pre-equipped system. It's a manual dispenser, as you can see here. Then we have something that is um, fantastic, is the Ingoman Smart ePro. That's a system that already exists for eight years, and it generates the power by itself. So you see a small window on the side where the if you move the lever on top, you generate the energy that you need to transmit the data from the dispenser. So this is really a green solution. Then of course you have the Ingoman Smart Touchless, so also a Euro bottle device with a touchless drive. And on the right hand side, you have the newest addition to that is the Suntra Plus uh, dispenser that is also smart. And this is uh, a device that is most commonly used in uh, public washrooms. And it also is a refillable system with an open bottle that can be refilled while the bottle is still in the dispenser. So here's the quick overview again of all these uh, smart systems. So as you can see in the first line, we have touchless versions, we have manual versions, the bottle type, as I'd explained, cartridge, Euro bottle and refillable. And now we come to another aspect because the, all those the syst uh, systems are smart. So they basically need power to transmit the data. <clears throat> we have uh, done um, very extreme measures basically to reduce the power consumption within the smart device and try to move everything up to the cloud. So we will hear a little bit uh, more about that so that we are really power saving in those smart devices. And yes, we need, of course, uh, batteries in most of the systems here. And those batteries last up to five years, like in the Ingoman Smart. So this is really tremendous uh, if you know what other systems are basically consuming with respect to energy. And as I said, the Ingoman Smart ePro doesn't even need uh, a battery. So this is a key advantage on top of that. And if we look, for instance, at the Ingoman Smart Touchless, um, because here you have two energy consuming parts, which is the data transmission, but the biggest part, of course, is the uh, energy you need for the touchless operation. And therefore, these devices are also available with a direct power AC power supply so that you don't need batteries for that, but you can also have it as a battery version. The Central Plus is uh, also with batteries, of course. And uh, what we've seen in the beginning of my presentation is that we have an included feedback LED, which is available on all the newer systems. So uh, the Ingoman Smart, of course, also has uh, a feedback LED. So that one is also 
very important. So on most of our devices, you have a direct feedback on the device. And as I said, uh, everything, all our smart devices are powered by the cloud. So we really do all the calculation, all the algorithms, everything is done in the cloud. So, and uh, Josh will come to that in the second part of the presentation. And therefore we can also do some kind of what others might call artificial intelligence. So we can do forecasting on when dispensers might run empty based on the usage and the consumption. And that also could give you an insight on if there is a shortage for the whole hospital, for instance, coming up in a week or two, if too many dispensers will run empty at the same point of time. And of course, if we're talking about cloud and data transmission, we keep the data safe with state-of-the-art security. And Josh will also go deeper into that. So keywords are, for instance, WPA Enterprise and NFC standards. So all this is incorporated in our systems. And what is also very critical is that if you see, want to see data, you want to see it basically on any device. And we can offer that, so you can use it either on desktop computers, of course, laptops, tablets, and also on smartphones. Now you can see how OHMS basically solves the hand hygiene problems. What we do, as I said, is we monitor the behavior of the users in real time. And we do that based on the hand hygiene event information. Well, first of all, what is a hand hygiene event? So you've seen that uh, a lot of devices being used in healthcare are still uh, hand operated. So with a lever either on top or below of the dispenser. And a hand hygiene is the number of uh, activations you do without a too long break. So if you push the lever two or three times in rapid uh, follow order, then basically this is to count it together as a hand hygiene event. Because if you want to take, for instance, 3 ml, you have to push the lever full for two times. And if you do, don't do it in full, you need maybe three or four pushing of the lever. And if there is no break in between that is longer than two seconds, all this is counted together as a hand hygiene event. So that we are sure that the user, that there is only one user that is taking the fluid out of the dispenser at that point of time. And then we register, of course, when the dispenser is being used and of course, which dispenser. So we know the location and we also know the amount that is being used. So the consumption. And doing with all that, we also get additional information from the dispensers so that we can send out alerts uh, if this is really needed. So first of all, and the most critical one is that uh, we send out a message when a dispenser needs to be refilled. And we do that not when the bottle is empty, but when the bottle is almost empty so that there are still about 20 uh, activations uh, possible so that you still have time to exchange uh, the bottle. And of course, we have systems with uh, half a liter or one liter devices. So for high usage areas, of course, you, need, you uh, will use the ones with the bigger bottles, like intensive care units, so that you don't have to change the bottles too often. But what we also do is, of course, we send out information when dispensers needs or should be relocated. What does that mean? For instance, if you have a dispenser that is put in a position where it is not frequently used, maybe just once a day, uh, or some dispensers maybe not for a whole week, this basically proves that the dispenser is in wrong position and that you can use it in another location to a better purpose. So you get uh, proposals on the dispensers that are not being used too frequently. And of course, when a dispenser is not connected to the network, to whatever reason possible, that will also be sent out as an alert. And as I said, the batteries last very long, but if a battery runs low, of course, you also get a notification on that. And that is about four to six weeks before the battery is really empty. So enough time 
to exchange the batteries. The last point that I said is uh, basically for the whole institution that you need reports and building reports could be very tricky and you could forget things. So we make a lot of proposals that you can choose from pre-assembled uh, reports, but of course you can also adapt those reports very easily and you can send them out automatically every week or every day or every month, whatever you want. So that is relatively easy. And Josh will also show you how those reports are generated or you can choose them from a drop list. And that is critical to track the hand hygiene compliance by any ward or shift. Um, you have heard the, the word ward or shift or team from me many times. And one of our credos is basically that we do not want to track individuals we track only groups because we are a strong believer that the group is the one that can drive compliance further. So if you work together in a group, we do the trainings on teams and groups as well, so that if the whole team uh, goes together, they can increase the compliance on a very long basis. And that is what really uh, moves the compliance rate up. And we have also studies that could prove that, and I will also show you later something on that. And of course, you want to share the trends and insights with the teams, the superiors, and also in some cases also with the public partners, so that you can really save lives by increasing the compliance. Um, maybe most of you know that the compliance rate, according to uh, the the target that is 100%, which is the five moments of hand hygiene in hospitals is approximately 40%, which means that 60% of all required uh, hand hygiene events are not being done. And, um, but it is also um, with all the healthcare institutions in the world, there is not one individual hospital that reaches the 100%. So that's a target that basically cannot be achieved, but you should do everything possible to go in the right direction. And therefore our system is also able to have targets set by the individual teams. So for instance, if they want to go to from a compliance rate of 40% to 42% the next week, they can set the 42% as their target level and they see how close they come or even if they top it. So again, as I said, the team is the important one. It's a team target and they can set it and they can commit to it at the beginning of the week. And then they can see basically any hour how far they are going to reach the target. And that of course is also critical if you want to coach the people and you see if you are not going in the right direction, what can be done and you can immediately see the feedback if it is improved in a day. So this feedback of course is automatic. So I said it always starts at the dispenser, but we can see it also on feedback screens in the wards which are not to the public. So it's only to the, to the healthcare worker team on the shift and on the ward so that they can see what their actual performance is. As I said, you can create reports that are sent out regularly. And of course, you can have quality uh, reports for the hand hygiene managers at the hospitals or the hygienists and that they can have the reports on any basis that they need to have them. For instance, in Germany, there is a, a monthly report that is required from the hospitals, which is the KISS report. And something like that is uh, also required in most of the countries worldwide, and we can generate that report automatically. Now it's time for the product tour of OHMS. Thanks, Peter. I think that's over to me. Hi, everyone. So first thing to note is that um, this is demo data. So just before um, I dive into anything, um, this isn't real data. This is not a customer's actual data. This is purely for demo purposes. So we do keep your data secure. We make sure that nobody um, ever sees any data that isn't you know, strictly to that customer. Um, 
And as, of course, for webinars, we keep it um, uh, private as well. And um, uh, all of this is not only because of regulation, but because it's the right thing to do. So we do have a new look and feel to provide to you today. Um, so um, it's a much cleaner interface, but it, it, it's one of the best engineered UXs um, I, I've encountered. Of course, I'm a little biased, but um, it, you, you can have quick access to any piece of the data. You can almost, in about 90% of the use cases um, in the system can be accomplished from uh, the main dashboard. And then if you spend any time in the reporting side, that's that pretty much covers the rest. Once things are set up, you can almost do everything in the system from the dashboard. And it's interactive and dynamic. Things flow really well. Um, you can change granularities. You can see here, switching between weekly and monthly, you can generate um, whatever data you need to see for your uh, workflows um, uh, very quickly and very intuitively. And like Peter's already mentioned, it's designed for all devices. There's not a device that won't fit um, the OHMS data on it, um, which is really great for you know, the different use cases within the system. Sometimes you need to be looking at generating reports and looking at overall data where you're sitting on you know, your work machine and you, you've got that desktop experience, but you might be out on the floor troubleshooting issues, trying to figure out what devices um, need to be relocated or things like that. And so having the mobile access is, is a pretty key functionality to the overall system. And yes, it, it literally is one of the best engineered UXs I've ever seen. Um, everything um, can be done very quickly and it's so intuitive. Um, we focus on real human uh, behavior um, in a human-centered design that really allows people to you know, predict behavior of the app without ever having experienced certain features. Um, the way everything's been built, it really makes it so that um, it, you never have to think twice. You know what's going to happen when you use different features because of just how intuitive it is. Um, and we did this by building on you know the last 10 years worth of user feedback um, and expertise in the hand hygiene um, uh, you know arena, um, which has created this beautiful, um, very clean interface. Yeah, so we put in intuitive design is key. Um, we really work on the idea that um, if you are seeing the UI for the first time, it doesn't matter. You can still use it as well as somebody who's an expert in the system like myself. Everything should be very um, consistent and um, the colors that we choose, everything is really specifically designed um, for it to be as quick and easy and um, uh, to understand as possible. Um, it's very dynamic as you change things and you're looking at different um, timelines or uh, data points, it, everything just seamlessly moves um, and, and changes for the data that you need to see. We've also gone for very light color. You know, the healthcare space does generally lean that way and we think that that design really puts a, a nice um, uh, visual effect into the, into the data you're looking at. Now we'll pop into the actual live demo. Okay, so um, this is our dashboard. Again, this is demo data, so no need to worry about um, showing anything. Um, I'll draw your attention to the top left to start. This is what we call our context menu. So it changes the context of the data you see in the two panels below. So um, here you can change your location context. So this is the overall um, organization that's in, in our demo called OHMS demo. We have two departments. And then within departments, we have wards and then uh, patient rooms and then individual dispensers in those rooms. And you can see as we click through, everything just seamlessly transfers to the data that you want to see. If we take a look at a ward, see ward level data. Um, and the next context menu is, of course, our time range context. So this is showing data for the last week, but you can just as easily go and show for the last month. Um, the current month that you're in or the last 30 days. Of course, we can look at data for the year as well. So if we look at the last 12 months worth of data, you can see how quickly that shifts. So we just you know, parse through 54,000 events and it's showing it nice and easy. Um, and of course, there's always the, uh, the ability to show a custom uh, time range. Um, you, know, you need to just see the data that you need to see. So um, any custom um, time ranges you need um, are readily available. 
So going into our main panel here, so this is our data panel. On the left, we have our donut, our favorite part of, or my favorite part, I should say, of our dashboard here. Um, it gives you so much information right at a glance. So you can see we're looking at the number of hand hygiene events um, over the month of January, 2021. Um, looks very consistent. Again, this is demo data. It can be very tricky to generate really random data or reflect reality. So it's probably a smoother graph than you would see in real life, but um, I think it serves our purpose here. And you can see our total number in this month was 8,152, but we had a target of 12,400. So if we just click on the target here, um, our targets are set per day. So we have 400, but there were 31 days in January. So multiply that out and you end up with 12,400. Um, but if you want to shift this down, maybe um, for this ward, it's, it shouldn't be set at 400. Maybe we're looking closer to 300. This is a real target and then save and you can see everything just shifts for you. And the donut, the, the amount full it is, is your percentage um, completion on your target. So if you hit 100%, let's drop this down to a really low number um, that will definitely be hitting it. You can see the, the donut spilled all the way through. And it's not just hand hygiene events. Of course, you can change that and look at whatever value you need to see. So we can take a look at volume. We don't even have a target set for volume, so let's set one. Um, let's set um, one liter per day. You can save and you can see everything just again shifts. We can see 31 liters because 31 days. Um, and again, really helps you identify um, where you're at um, with your targets very easily. Um, another thing you can do is look at, you know, your per patient day values, but looks like this ward doesn't have any. So we'll just switch over to, say, this ward, which also seems to be missing some. What's wrong with our, oh, okay. So we have a few days in um, that we haven't reported on our numbers. So let's take a look at the current month. And again, another day where we haven't reported our numbers. We've got to clean that up. Um, but if we look at a custom time range just for the last week, Definitely gotten all of our, oops, there we go. Oh, again, we haven't reported enough. So let's go back to the 21st, 24th. We've got lots of patient day information. So you can see now we have our target um, and our actual value for number of hand hygiene events per patient day. We have a much higher target set right now. So let's drop that down to something a little bit more realistic um, and have a look at that. See, again, it just shifts, um, but this all feeds into our compliance calculations. So you can see, again, if you're looking more for compliance, you can see your numbers right there. And below our donut is our detail panel. So this is where, for anywhere you're looking in the context, it gives you your values straight away. So you can see um, your targets, your actuals, um, the number of patient days in the system, and of course, the, the raw values for volume and number of hand hygiene. And in the middle, as I've been, you know, messing with the, the UI as we go through this. Um, this is our main graph, of course. Um, you have the same options here to see whatever values you need. So if we look at um, hand hygiene events for the last 30 days, you can see them um, right now. This is set to a daily granularity, um, but if you click, you can see a weekly granularity if that's more helpful to you, um, or you can switch back to daily. Below is our, um, our uh, window shifter. So you can just see a smaller time range if you're looking for that. You wanna focus in on a specific um, area or go through it as sort of a, a storyboard kind of scrolling across. And of course you can do that with any granularity. Then on the right is our quality bar. So our quality bar just indicates how well you're doing in the hand hygiene event um, arena. So um, the ideal value for hand hygiene event is three ml, but not every um, time we activate do we get you know three ml out of the dispenser. Most often than not, it's about 1.5 ml, so you need two full activations to get that um, proper dosage. But if people only do one activation and then walk away, well, you need to know about that because that's not a you know a high quality hand hygiene event, and so we need to also be able to tell when people aren't using enough activations um, at it once to get the proper dosage. So looking here, we can see we have 239 hand hygiene events at the 3ML level. So they're doing well, 
but for the most part, we have a lot of people down in the one to 1 1.5 ml area. So 4,877 of our hand hygiene events here are um, you know, subpar, I would call them. But it gives you a great way of seeing this uh, quality metrics and um, you know, working on improving this over time. And then right below is just the overall average for all the, the data we're seeing. So on average for um, the last 30 days, we've hit 1.81 ml. Um, so we really need to work on, you know, getting our demo data to, to give a better dosage. Then down below is our alerts panel. So again, everything in the UI can be seen almost um, entirely at a glance here. And one important piece of that is where are the problems with the dispensers? Because as much as we, you know, want to talk about the quality of hand hygiene events or the numbers, um, it's important that the devices work in order for you to then um, uh, you know, get these numbers in the first place or, or um, you know, actually have the billing good to provide the quality that is required. So down below, you can see we have different types of alerts. We have battery alerts, which will show when, you know, one of our devices is run out of battery. Uh, last message alerts are for when it's been a day since we've heard from a dispenser. Um, our dispensers have a built-in um, once every 24 hour quality of service message that we should hear. If we don't get that, then it's likely something wrong. Either the Wi-Fi network isn't working or uh, there's something else wrong with the device. We have service alerts. So service alerts are for um, the device needs service outside of the other, um, uh, you know, the normal uh, maintenance of a device. So the filling good's good. Um, the battery could be good. Um, but uh, Josh, just maybe good. just one remark uh, because uh, you and myself just stressed that. Uh, there could be a, a network problem, but uh, we did not mention so far that uh, our dispensers basically save the data for a very long period if they cannot transmit it. So I think that's critical. So no data will be lost in no part of the whole process. So I think that's very good. So don't worry, even if the dispenser is not connecting to the network, it still saves the data and it only gives that data away when it is transferred and otherwise it saves the data on the device itself. Absolutely, Peter. The, the point of this panel is really for troubleshooting issues with the devices, but at no point will your device lose any data. Um, even in the case where the battery is very, very low, where it cannot have enough power to transmit the data over Wi-Fi, we're still logging those events. And as soon as the batteries get refilled, everything gets sent on. Um, and it's all, uh, uh, a very reliable protocol built in to our, our devices that ensures that um, every event gets sent into our IoT core and then into our um, applications here um, with 100% uh, reliability and with you know, added features of deduplication, ensuring that if an event is sent twice, we, we ensure that uh, um, it only shows up once in the system. So very good point, Peter. Um, uh, moving on, so the next um, alert that's uh, very critical, right, is the filling level. Um, and if you click here, we can see we have 10 devices that are currently at 0%. So we need to work on this um, and, and provide that. So one thing that isn't showing right now is our, um, our tree view. So when we click on a dispenser, you'll be able to find exactly where in this tree you will find um, your dispenser. So you never have to worry about, oh, well, I just see a serial number. No, no, you can find out exactly where in the patient room um, that dispenser exists. And then we have our last alert type is message collector. This is just a uh, one piece to our uh, infrastructure that um, collects the messages from the devices and then forwards them onto our IoT core. And if this, there's something wrong with this, again, um, we're still collecting the events either at the device level or at the message collector level but there's some communication problem with our IoT core. But again, every step along the way, everything is saved and um, is sent once everything's back up and running. So no event loss, but um, sometimes problems do happen. And when that happens, um, we don't wanna see, you know, a hundred devices sending alerts that we haven't seen them. We can just send one alert letting you know that um, we need to do some maintenance. So one last feature that I wanted to show about the dashboard is our report generation. So while we do have a report section that I'll walk you through 
in just a moment. Um, one great thing is that if you need to see, um, uh, if you generate a report here and you're looking, okay, well, I want to know uh, from the 23rd to the 24th what the data looked like, um, and you need this as a report. One really great feature about the UI is the ability to generate reports based on your context that you've set. So you can go down here underneath the, the graph, click this drop down, and go to save report, and you have the option of PDF report um, or just getting the raw data in a CSV. You can just click that and it'll generate and then download right um, to your browser. Um, of course, we also have our standardized reports. So in here you can see um, uh, we can generate a report for um, uh, at the runtime. So you can see any of these can be just generated. So we can say, want to see the hand hygiene reports and run the report. Um, and you can also subscribe to any of these standardized reports um, within just setting up a weekly um, email or whatever you need. So again, you can just pick your report, um, deploy dispensers, or um, if you need a hand hygiene events per patient day data, and you can send that out on a weekly, daily, uh, or monthly basis, um, uh, of course, for whatever you need it to be. So that's, I would say, about 95% um, of, of all the usage you ever need to see in the system. Um, once everything's set up and working for you, the home and report section is really where um, uh, most users will live. Um, and yeah, so thank you for letting me show this. And the next feature coming to um, our devices is NFC. So one, um, one tap of your smartphone and you can configure a device for your network, your needs, whatever you need it to be. Um, it's lightning fast, on the spot, um, and will be you know, set up for rapid deployment of many devices. So if you have to configure many devices, just put in your Wi-Fi credentials, tap, 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 and um, it should be a, you know, it's a really great, fast experience for setting up uh, devices. Thanks, Josh. Uh, very great tour. And as we've seen, very intuitive. And also the slide on the NFC showed uh, Sandra Plus a smart device. Of course, this feature NFC is available on all our smart devices. And you can get that install app um, also from the App Store for all the devices. Um, so what is really, just to wrap that up, what is the impact of OHMS? What we've learned so far is basically it can prevent infections by raising the compliance ratio of hand hygiene. And therefore it can save lives. And we've proven in studies that that can be up to 20% of uh, the people that would have died due to hospital acquired infections. And of course, it will reduce costs because there is no direct uh, monitoring required by, by people. And of course, next to the saving of lives, there is also the prevention of sepsis, which is a very costly factor in hospitals because those hospital acquired infections use a lot of medication and longer hospitalization, so more days spent on the ward, and that is basically not earning any money for the hospitals. And of course, antibiotics uh, are being um, used less often, and all these factors basically help to reduce the overall costs. Here is an, uh, one of the studies that we've uh, conducted, which shows you why it is so important not only to give the feedback directly to the individual groups, but on top of that, if you do feedback and goal setting, what we can do with our software here in the Heidenheim Clinic in Germany, proved that it is almost more than double what you had before all this is basically set. So. I think it's fantastic uh, what we've uh, seen here. And the Heidenheim Clinic is also a university and we are still doing new studies on the use of the uh, UI that we've just shown, how that is basically improved. So it's not only the users that give uh, us feedback to how our software is working, but we also do on top of that clinical studies and we also have a medical director on our team that helps us support all those studies. So we get feedback from basically 
a lot of places all over the world. As I said, the prevention of infections is that what really saves life and critical to that is that the data is in real time so that you can really, or the healthcare worker can really react quicker to what is happening. And what we think, as, uh, as I said, is that the team targets help uh, basically improve the team performance and therefore drives the whole compliance upwards and the automatic feedback is something that is uh, really critical and which is quite unique in the market. As I said, reducing the costs is, of course, uh, an added feature to that. So we believe that uh, breaking the chain of infection is the critical one and saving lives. But on top of that, we can reduce uh, the costs, as I said, uh, up to reducing antibiotics. So that is very critical. So because a smart system, of course, costs more money than a regular system, but that is uh, the payback of this or the return on investment is very short. So that helps a lot basically to uh, get over that hurdle for the investment. Thanks, Peter and Josh. Um, we're at the Q&A part of the webinar. So I just have a, a couple questions here. And Josh, maybe I'll pass it over to you first. I'm going to bring you on webcam now. Um, so my question for you, Josh, is what kinds of security features or protocols does OHMS use? Yeah, so, um, you know, privacy and um, uh, reliability are at the name of the game when it comes to um, OHMS. So um, we use the um, latest and greatest TLS encryption to um, encrypt data from, you know, the device all the way through. Um, and we have our own proprietary protocol that we use within that. And then once everything's stored, um, you know, in our IoT core um, or in OHMS, then um, it, it's locked down in the most private ways possible. Everything is um, kept very separate um, for each customer. Um, all data is just um, is segregated so that we know exactly um, what customer this belongs to and nobody else has access to it other than um, accounts for that specific customer. So very secure system um, to ensure that your data is as private as possible, especially when you're dealing with things like patient day information. Um, it's, it's critical that that, you know, stays private to you and your institution. So we uh, take that value to heart and ensure that that works. Great. Thanks, Josh. And my next question, Peter, maybe you can take this one. Um, I'll bring you on webcam here. This presentation talked a lot about hospitals, um, but would OHMS work in nursing homes? Yes, of course. Uh, and it is uh, OHMS, so it's for healthcare. And um, of course, we always tend to talk about hospitals in that case, because it's also hospital acquired infections, but there are also infections in nursing homes. And unfortunately, the COVID uh, pandemic has proven that this is uh, the nursing homes is a very critical kind of healthcare institution and that the death toll in those nursing homes and, uh, and residents is basically tremendous. And um, so an improved hand hygiene compliance and a trackable one maybe could have saved a lot, lot of lives, but not only in the pandemic. So we are already uh, installing smart solutions in nursing homes, but that is because of other viruses that are quite common in nursing homes. For instance, the norovirus which can also take in the elderly population can take a death toll. So if uh, the hand disinfection is uh, done properly, that can also be reduced and also the spreading of the norovirus in the nursing homes can be prevented. And it brings me also to another point is because we offer complete packages to nursing homes and they not only include the smart dispensers uh, on the individual resident rooms and for the healthcare workers there, but also uh, another feature, which is the uh, Presidio, which is a little bit bigger device for visitors. 
and that is also used in the visiting area in hospitals. But we use that in nursing homes also to open the doors of the nursing home. So you can only enter a nursing home with that system when it is connected, when you have disinfected your hands as a visitor, and then only the door goes open. And in COVID, for instance, we use the same technology and the same devices also for the German vaccination centers. So if you are registered, uh, you have to scan the barcode and or the QR code, and then you have to disinfect your hands, and only then the turnstile opens uh, the door basically to the vaccination center. So there are multiple applications for that. So we take smart a lot farther down the road than just sending out data of an individual dispenser. So for us, it is really the, the vision that we uh, share is that we really want to break the infection and no matter where it occurs. But the question therefore was very well done and that is nursing homes is also a key target group for that. Great, thanks Peter. So I just encourage you all to stay up to date. Um, if you wanna join our next webinar, we've got a year's worth of lineups coming up and we're excited to talk about uh, various products and, and types of hand hygiene um, improvements that are coming. And we love for you to sign up to our newsletter. We just sent it out, uh, but you can access that at news.opart.com and follow us everywhere on social media. We'd love to stay in touch there as well. This has been the OHMS webinar. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And we're thankful for the ways in which you're partnering with us to break the chain of infection. And we hope you have a great day. Thank you and goodbye.